Welcome to Keep Me Posted with Planet Aid. And today we are going to be talking to Katie Stover, who is Royal International Miss Pennsylvania. You actually, Katie, piqued my interest um, <laughs> when I saw an Instagram post on, um, on you kind of taking your donations, your clothing donations to your local gym, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and then what you said on the post, I loved it. You said that when you do donations, it's nice um, when it's actually accessible. So basically, you're just saying how more people will probably donate if it could be this easy. And exactly. Yeah. So want to just say thank you for coming on today. Right, yeah. And that was a very inspirational post to me because I think that a lot of people would very much be interested in following your lead. So thank oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I'm super excited to be here. So Katie, tell me a little bit about yourself. So uh, my name is Katie Stover. Like you said, I am Royal International Miss Pennsylvania 2022, um, which basically means I'm just serving the state of Pennsylvania for 365 days um, and trying to make the biggest impact that I can. Um, I graduated from college um, in May, so I'm a recent college grad experiencing the new world, which is awesome. <laughs> um, and I live in Pittsburgh, which is kind of how we got connected because these Planet Aid boxes were put up in my local gym, like you said. Um, and I just got really interested in donating because, you know, like you said, and like I said, when when donation are made accessible for everyone, it's really easy to get involved and make a difference. Um, and that's what I want to try and advocate for this year is that it's not hard to make an impact if you just look around you and try and find the things that are available for you. And sometimes that can be a little bit difficult, but um, in my life, I've um, always advocated for illiteracy. Um, I grew up in Rochester, New York, um, in the city where I was not always surrounded by like-minded peers who love to read and were really involved in education simply because they didn't have the resources available to them. Um, and I noticed from a very young age that I was a little more lucky in my life to have parents that really supported education, wanted to help me follow and pursue a higher education if that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to make a difference. So that was a really long-winded answer, but no, no, to that's say the great. least, <laughs> I am all about community service and advocacy and whatever kind of way that looks at the time. And I love that also because, you know, I would imagine, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I would imagine that having the title beauty queen um, would, could come with a lot of people sort of just making you a one-dimensional figure um, and not understanding that most of these pageant, um, most of the people who participate in pageants have a lot of community service behind them already, correct? Right, absolutely. And that's one of the things that I love. And it's not to say that every pageant system is exactly the same. So I can't speak on behalf of, you know, other organizations, but at least for Royal International Miss, the whole point of this organization is service. That is how it became so impactful. I mean, there's even a, it's called the Royal International Miss role model because it is literally you have a whole separate interview that's simply based on your service and you're chosen because you have the biggest heart for service. You want to advocate for a year on whatever cause you care about. Um, so it's definitely a, a stigma that I experience a lot with people just assuming, especially since I'm blonde, that, you know, I have this one sided look to me. Um, so I really appreciate you thinking about that. And, and thank you for saying that. No, oh, of course. I mean, I also wanted to just talk about the fact that you are obviously even though your uh, position doesn't say that you're Miss Role Model, you are a role model, obviously within your community. So how do you kind of get people to get more involved? And I think that's one of the things that you were speaking about. You want people to look at you and say, okay, well, if she can do that, I can do this too, or I can do something else, you know, sort of in that vein. So tell me a little bit about how you see your influence. Right. Well. Through social media, that's been the biggest way that I've been able to make an impact and really connect with people in that different way. Before um, COVID and the pandemic and everything, I went into schools a lot because that is my heart and my passion. If I didn't follow communications in college, I would have been an education major, I like to say, um, because I love being able to impact the lives of children who maybe see their lives as this one path 
Um, and through literacy and through pursuing education and finding a, like a love for it, um, I want to show them that you can over you can overachieve and you can achieve anything you want with your mindset on it. And so being able to connect with them and share my story because like looking at me, you'd never know where I grew up or how I grew up and kind of my like journey to having this degree and having an education. Um, but if I really simplify it and say like, hey, I was in your shoes, I understand, I've been there, um, that always breaks down a lot of barriers. So really making myself human, and I think that's what a lot of pageant title holders are becoming more and more aware of is that we need to make ourselves as human as possible, um, not trying to like glam up the situation and make it seem like we're this perfect person because no one is, um, and breaking down the barriers and just connecting with people on that human level whether that's through education or through just simple donations, um, whatever it may be, just showing them that you are not a perfect human is always a great way to start that connection and service. And I want to talk to you a little bit about your project. You work with collecting books. So basically, it's a wonderful thing because it's, you know, it goes along the lines of what we do as far as reusing a resource. And books are obviously a great resource to try to kind of uh, bring to others. So tell me a little bit about that project. Yeah, so um, it's changed titles throughout the years. It was Growth Through Literacy, it was Bless a Book, and now it's currently called Read, Lead, Succeed, um, which is an organization that I founded that basically tries to connect children and give them books to call their own. Because as I was growing my service, um, because I have advocated for literacy for about 10 years now, um, I noticed that the biggest hardship was just the lack of resources for children having books in their hands. And I'm sure it's the same thing with clothing. It's just not having that accessibility to keep and own something, to call it your own. Um, it provides a lot of confidence in students, especially when they have a book that it's theirs. Like they're not going to the library, taking it out and returning it. They can keep it call it their own, they can annotate it, they can do whatever they want with it. Um, and having that confidence for a student and to have someone care about them in that way to say, I want you to read this and I want you to call it your and do whatever you want with it because it's yours is really, really huge. Um, and I've seen it through, you know, used books with new books. It doesn't necessarily matter what it looks like. Um, and that's why I do used books because I see the impact everywhere I go. And I've recently made it international. So I've connected with organizations across the world that need resources um, like orphanages in India, um, resources in Uganda, like trying to find ways to connect these children with books. Um, and of course, that's a little more challenging when you're doing it internationally than it is here in the US. Mm -hmm. But I have found so many people need them and we just don't even think about it because in the US, we have education a lot more accessible to us than in other countries. And also a lot of libraries as well, right. community libraries, things like that. So yeah, that's, that's a wonderful, uh, that's a wonderful program. And uh, I wish you so much success with that. Um, so tell me a little bit about what your plan is. Once you finish your reign, <laughs> how will you keep this uh, influence going? How will you kind of double down and and say okay this isn't this wasn't just about me being miss uh royal international miss pa i know i'm messing that all up no, you <laughs> royal international miss pa it wasn't about that so much as it was about what i wanted to accomplish through that right well i will kind of i you know like in my job i measure success through social media so i'll measure success through my reign and through the work that I did because it will continue on past these 365 days. I want to continue to work with these international organizations. I mean, I'm never going to stop advocating for literacy. Um, I want to ideally one day, like my dream is to work with Teach for America and get involved with them, um, work with Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. I mean, there's, or Reading Library, there's so many things that I want to do that. Sometimes it's a little bit hard when you're looking at service and this probably goes for anything when you're looking at it and you say, okay, I only have this long to make it happen. Um, just changing the perspective and thinking it doesn't have to be one year. It can be a lifetime work of service. Um, especially with literacy, it's going to be a continued uphill battle, especially with the pandemic for me. 
Um, and I'm sure the same goes for, for clothing. It's like needed now more than ever. So just continuing to work for the people that need it most. And it's, it's not about me. It's never been about me. And but we're you're recognizing that. You're using your vehicle so very well, as far as just uh, putting attention on literacy as well. So, so I just wanted to connect with you because I found that uh, you were such an inspirational young person. Is that okay to say? Thank yes. you. <laughs> yes, it is. I am. Um, I so I, I, I thought that was, a, you know, that you were doing such great things at, at a young age as well. So um, continue. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> and, so much. Oh, yeah. And thank, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me.